Hello and welcome. I'm Alison Duana. I'm an astrologer. Um, the goddess asteroids are the area I'm really interested in. Um, and also synthesizing with the gene keys, uh, which gives a really amazing kind of other level for me of uh, much more kind of specific information. So today is um, the 14th of January. Um, it's day 26 of Venus's retrograde cycle. And she actually rises as the morning star today. So um, on the 9th of January, she had her conjunction with the sun. Um, and then she's now come out of that bright light of the sun and, and wherever you live in the world, if you're awake at dawn, you may see her there on the horizon, visible again to us here on Earth. Um, it's such a beautiful mystery. <laughs> <laughs> and people have been doing it for thousands of years, you know, following the cycle of Venus, especially, and the other planets. So there's lots of really amazing things going on today. Um, Mercury's gone retrograde. Ceres has gone retrograde at the same time. And um, Pluto is moving from Jinky 61 into Jinky 60. So I actually want to begin with that because um, I realized this amazing thing when I was uh, doing a podcast with my wonderful human design colleague, Katrini Matisse from Russia the other day. Um, you know, the, the, the actual location in the body graph of 61 and 60, um, you know, are, are going to create something actually in our bodies that we may well be able to feel and recognize the shift. Okay, so um, this is gate 61 here, and this is gate 24. And Pluto um, has been in gate 61 for ages, and Uranus is actually in gate 24 at the moment. So for the last number of years, we've had this very powerful activation going on through these planets. Pluto is life, death, rebirth. Um, Uranus is the planet of revolutionary change, turning everything upside down. Um, and that certainly happened in the last few years. Um, so this has really been helping us um, address addiction patterns, um, ways of thinking that no longer serve us, that no longer work. Um, so there's a lot of transformation being taken place. Now, Pluto is still there in the design. So you can see it's still highlighted in red there, um, if I come in a bit. Um, but what we're going to, so, but in the, in the kind of where it actually is today, it's moved to gate 60. Now you can see this is jumping all the way from the Ajna to the root center. So Pluto in the root center is going to really um, bring up any unresolved sexual wounding, um, insecurities, fears about um, being grounded, um, all of that kind of thing can be triggered in the root center because our root center is like our sense of stability, our sense of belonging. Um, so, yes, yeah, so how will this manifest? I'm really interested to see in, in my own life how that will go and feel. Um, yeah, and you know, I've been engaged in this mudra practice during the Venus retrograde since winter solstice um, with a group of women. Um, there's one man, actually. <laughs> 
and anyone's welcome to join. Um, but uh, yeah, so I just want to share these two mudras. So let me come out of the, the sharing of the page here. Okay, so, um, so Jinky 61, this is the mudra for it. And um, it's, it's, it's called um, the Pali mudra, the sheltered place. And it has the city of sanctity. So it's been really amazing doing this. Um, you know, what it reminds me of is uh, when I was, um, a teenager, I'd started smoking. And I, of course, I thought I was very clever doing that and very naughty. And I remember one of my teachers saying to me, you know, your body is a temple. And it kind of hit me, her words. But of course, I was very arrogant and young. And I, I thought I know better. But actually coming into this sanctity mudra, um, I'm really feeling at the deepest level that our bodies are a temple. And um, I think this mudra really helps to um, have that desire to nurture your body as a sheltered place. Now, there's things that can come at us from the outer environment but a lot of times we're inviting these kind of harsh or negative energies in um, and I've indicated one way through my addiction to smoking which thankfully I've managed to break now after a lot lot of effort um, but that was inviting in something to my body um that was problematic now i know smoking isn't problematic for some people who do it so um i'm talking about my own experience here of inviting in kind of those old behaviors or toxins ways of managing my feelings um and uh that was creating an unsheltered place for myself, you know, creating a place not of safety on, on many levels. So it's a very powerful um, Pluto activation, I think, that has brought this awareness into my body. And as I say, it's interacting with Uranus in the 24, and that's the shadow of addiction. Um, so just generally thinking about what is it that you invite into your, your inner sanctuary, your body, that, that may not be making it a safe place, you know, without taking away all pleasures. <laughs> I'm not suggesting that at all. Okay, and then we're moving into 60. This is such an intriguing mudra, the 60. So you push the ring finger into the Venus mound there and you hold the, the finger right by the knuckle and you can see it creates a little hole there. Um, now this is called the Shunya mudra. Um, or the void or the emptiness and it's all about divine justice so this is really intriguing you know this divine justice in the root chakra um, and so the journey I'm on with this mudra is a lot around sexual healing things that have happened in you know even in my childhood um, that have made my body feel like not safe um, and, and linking it with the one before <laughs> often it was the way I was being that was making it unsafe um, so there's something for me in the male female healing actually in this divine justice mudra um, but also this is um, where you know, the Pluto returns going to take place in America in February. And so what's coming to me also about this divine justice is linked to um, indigenous people. 
So I'm going to be doing a, a separate podcast on that because <laughs> it's too much to do in, in one day. But just sharing those mudras, I hope, will um, you know, allow you maybe to feel into the energies rather than just trying to kind of intellectually understand them. OK, so let's have a look at the chart here. Um, so we'll begin, we've talked about Pluto already. Um, here's Pluto <clears throat> at 26 degrees, 22 minutes. That's the crossover point in Capricorn from Jinky 61 to Jinky 60. Everything is traveling in an anti-clockwise direction. Um, apart from the nodes, <laughs> the moon's nodes, which are going the other way. OK, so here we have Venus. She's on day um, 26 of her retrograde of 40 days today. And um, she's in Jinky 54, line one. Now, this is where the Sun-Venus conjunction took place in the line four. This is a really mystical position, according to Ra Uruhu, who brought through the human design. In fact, he says it's the most mystical position in the entire zodiac. And in the Gene Keys, it's all about the shadow of greed. Um, the gift of aspiration. So if greed is coming from a place of fear and grasping, aspiration, um, it's still ambitious, um, and it might even still be self-serving, but it wants to bring others with it as well. You know, it sees like the bigger picture, um, rather than greed is, reminds me a bit of the monkey who gets its hand stuck in the bottle all the time trying to get the sweets out and um, because it can't wait or you know it's got that kind of just impulse to take that is within all of us of course in our chemistry so here we have this opportunity in the next 18 months in this Venus cycle of rising into this gift of aspiration you know what are your aspirations for your community for the other people you work with um, sometimes just making that field greater and create an intention not just for yourself but for all the people around you to succeed can really change the whole energy pattern um, yeah, as I found many times. <laughs> and, uh, and then we've got the city of ascension. So, um, yeah, so this, this city is um, taking, sorry, the left index finger and holding it. So you're creating a real energy of, of heaven and earth through this mudra. The energy, the, the evolutionary energy is spiraling up to meet the involutionary energy coming down. And we are, we are deeply embedding spirit into matter here. OK, and what's wonderful, as I mentioned at the beginning, is that Venus um, rises as morning star today. Um, so, yeah, feels like so many interesting things are happening. Um, so let's jump to Mercury and then we'll come back to these goddess asteroids here that are also in Capricorn that tell us something about the story. Uh, but Mercury, you can see there's got an S. That means Mercury is stationary and is about to turn retrograde. So it's going to be a very intense period coming up. You know, we've got Venus going retrograde. She plugs into our feelings, um, our sexuality, our fertility. That can mean your fertility can be, you know, physically having babies, but it's also about our creative spark, our fertility. 
Then we have Mercury going retrograde as well. So here we have a whole layer of communication issues that may come up, issues around contracts, um, promises that were made that are being broken, um, maybe seeing something for the first time that you haven't really seen in yourself. I know I've been feeling that the last few days, like a Maya is gently shattering around, um, you know, very deep seated issues around this kind of need for success and, and that kind of energy rather than just beingness. Whenever this need for success comes in, it, it feels like a, like a force that's a bit of a problematic force actually. So it's like trying to reset into another level of, of being. Um, yeah, so um, Mercury is in Jinky 19, line three. And here we have Saturn, they're in Aquarius. We have Saturn is in Jinky 19, line six. So this is the shadow of codependence and the gift of sensitivity. And the city of sacrifice, you know, sometimes a sacrifice needs to be made in order for us to move forward. Um, sometimes that's the ending of a way we may have been doing things for a long time. And it feels hard to end it because it's like so ingrained in us and doing things a different way can feel really uncomfortable at that edge of change. Okay, so um, yeah, I wanna bounce back here to, um, to Vesta. She is the sacred priestess archetype and she has um, just entered into um, Capricorn there. Um, yeah, so she's in Jinky 10. Um, I just want to show you, this is how we, we begin the mudra practice with Jinky 10. Um, this is the treasure chest where you focus on the hollow in your hands um, and invoke the city of beingness or being. Um, and it's such a wonderfully simple and powerful <laughs> mudra this, you know, because um, I know for myself and for so many people I know that all the problematic patterns in our life come from feeling like we're not enough. You know, my beingness is somehow off, wrong. Um, all the things that I am, you know, the things I've rejected about myself, well, they're all here in this little treasure chest. Um, and just the practice regularly will start to really shift you into, I am a treasure chest rather than I'm not enough. And as soon as you make that shift on a, you know, and it's going to come and go, maybe it's going to be a bit wavy for a while. But as soon as you're anchored into I am a treasure chest, well, life is yours. <laughs> you know, life is yours for the living, for the taking, for the experiencing and the participating. You know, all those horrible fears dissolve about um, sharing who you really are. And it's very significant then for me that it's um, Vesta because Vesta um, represents a lot of deep-seated fears um, in women, in, uh, but in men as well, and people following some kind of esoteric healing path. Now, many people have got beyond that, but many people haven't as well. You know, I was talking to my colleague yesterday um, on Soul Tribe, Amy Piper, who's an EFT practitioner. She's really brilliant. And she was talking about how when she first started, she had these tremendous fears come up around sharing this practice. Um, 
you know, and it's becoming much more mainstream now. People engage in astrology and EFT tapping and all kinds of things. But it is amazing, like the past life cellular fear that can be held around the sharing of these gifts. And of course, we want everyone to blossom. You know, we want everyone to flower. And so we've got to get through and past these fears for that to really happen. OK, so. Um, the other one I want to mention um, is here Juno. She's the goddess of the sacred relationship. She's conjunct the sun. Um, so the sun, so she's at 61 line three. I think the sun today is at 61 line five. Okay, so this is the shadow of psychosis and um, the city of sanctity that I talked about with that mudra. So I'm kind of feeling the story as to do with the male and the female balance, equilibrium, karmic relationship. Uh, but the presence of Juno says to me, yes, <laughs> you know, this definitely is an issue. And, um, and so the rules, um, the tribal rules of relationships that are, you know, have held us for many thousands of years, um, all these unsaid things about why we get married, um, what we're hoping to get from those marriages, you know, often for the female, it's stability, it's commitment, it's for um, uh, financial wealth to take care of the family. These are very ancient codes in us, but there has been a price to pay historically. Um, you know, especially if you're from the older generations, um, we look at the divorce rates, you know, women and men are really changing and sometimes relationships don't survive those changes in consciousness. And sometimes it's just about renegotiating um, the unsaid rules of that relationship. You know, if honouring and equality uh, and commitment are at the heart of a relationship, um, well, you can't really go wrong. <laughs> you know? No matter what issues you have, whatever issues your partner has, um, you can approach them. But um, if there isn't that, those kind of simple ingredients, then it can be very hard to, to keep it going. Um, yeah, okay. So... Um, the only other final thing, there's so much I could talk about. In fact, there is two things I'm going to mention because um, Pallas Athena, Neptune, um, they're here in the first house in Pisces. They have been traveling together on and off for a while. Um, and now today they're actually exactly conjunct. Um, and um, just by minutes, Pallas Athena is in Jinky 36 line one, and Neptune is in 22, 22 line six. So this is all about compassion and grace. Um, Pallas Athena in um, Pisces is the Bodhisattva energy. So here we have themes about forgiveness. You know, maybe this is tuning into the divine with the divine justice because forgiveness and reconciliation um, are huge themes in that divine justice. Um, I was listening to a really wonderful podcast this week um, on the On Being project. I'll put a link to it in the um, information and an interview with Desmond Tutu, who, as you know, just passed away um, on Boxing Day. And, and I grew up in South Africa. In fact, Desmond Tutu uh, 
uh, confirmed my brother Mark. <laughs> so we got to meet him. And in those days, it was very strange because, you know, African people just weren't in any places of authority. So through some kind of sheer miracle, I mean, it does make you believe in God, actually, that Desmond Tutu survived those years um, without being taken out and was able to bring in this incredible truth and reconciliation process. Um, actually makes me feel quite tearful because I read a book on it and wow, it was the most horrific thing I've ever read. Um, but wow, the power of forgiveness is truly, you know, an amazing thing. Uh, so yeah, if you want to know something about divine justice, then this podcast and, you know, he talks about lots of things, but um, when he talks about the truth and reconciliation, it's really interesting, you know, how to burn out the karma. Uh, and to some extent it did. Um, but like he says, people are left with these wounds and this unrecognized collective trauma. And this is the case everywhere in the world where there's indigenous people in the UK they they um, you know we we have the the recovery of like the Welsh language the Gaelic language um, but there's some indigenous people who um, no longer exist you know they've either been come into the mainstream DNA or um, or disappeared altogether. So this is a time of reckoning, you know, it's a time of reckoning. Um, and the first part of reckoning is understanding what the kind of problem is really, and being sorry about it from your heart. Um, and it may not be you who perpetuated it, but you can kind of uh, feel sad, feel the grief around it, feel the anger perhaps around it. You know, whatever you need to feel, feel it. Okay, so the last thing now I'm going to say is um, that Ceres, who's the mother goddess, is um, stationary as well today. We can see here that she's conjunct the north node. Um, this is in Jinki 8 with its shadow of mediocrity and its gift of style. Um, so series turning retrograde may show us patterns where we're not nurturing ourselves. You know, if we're living in a state of mediocrity and the shadow on the south node there is compromise, if we won't allow ourselves to grow, if we won't allow our authentic self to be in the world, to flourish, if we won't make the, the change that needs to be change so that we can break out of the old pattern and into a new pattern that's going to help us you know really flower and rise up um, then it's going to be very stressful this time at the moment you know we're still in this Kala Sapa yoga um, until April where you can see all the planets and all the asteroids apart from Hygieia, the healing goddess there, um, and the moon are all the side of the zodiac. So there's this in, intense pressure to transform at the moment. Um, and these are some of the themes. These are some of the questions to ask yourself, you know, am I living a mediocre life or am I living my best life? And that's, that's not about success in a way. That can be a bit of a, a problem getting too into success. You know, it's about being your authentic self in the world as that beginning point of the flowering. Um, because you can be a successful 
doctor or accountant, you know, live in a huge house, be driving a Porsche and still feel this like emptiness inside that your authentic self is not able to be free, be, be who you were born to be. So this is what astrology is all about. So thank you for listening. Um, I work off a subscription platform called Soul Tribe Online. Um, it costs $29.99 a month to join. Can cancel at any time. But uh, we're following the Venus cycle at the moment. We've still got about 15 days left of our mudra process. That's a daily call at 8 p.m. UK time. Um, 8, I think it's 8 a.m. No, it's not. It's 12 midday Pacific time. Um, so please come and join if you feel a calling to get on this Venus adventure. It's a beautiful group of people. And uh, we're going to just have this amazing experience of really embodying and understanding the Venus cycle, the moon cycles. You know, learning about astrology in this way can't be beaten because you'll never forget it once you know it in your body and, and it's so personal to you, but it's also collective. Um, it's just so exciting. <laughs> so, so the link is below and you're welcome to email me at astroallison at gmail.com for more information about the Venus moon in a sanctuary. Um, or if you're interested in having a goddess asteroid or a gene keys reading with me. So namaste, satnam, uh, amen. <laughs> Go in peace. Bye.